Cher, Sandy Dennis, and Karen Black. It's Cher's first attempt on Broadway, and Tom Hoving takes us behind the scenes on opening night next. <laughs> of their play on Broadway. Tom Hoving takes us to opening night when 2020 continues. Right. Cher and Karen Black. And there at the theater just off Times Square, part of the opening night crowd, Tom Hoving. Hugh, the opening night audience has been making its way into the theater. The curtain will go up in a few minutes. 1,300 people are holding the hottest ticket in town. And we'll take a rare behind-the-scenes look at the work and creativity that went into making the gala night possible. What makes the opening of Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean so special are the names up on the marquee. It's a theatrical marriage made in heaven. Three big-name stars with proven box office appeal. Sandy Dennis, Cher, Karen Black, a fascinating combination. The controversial Hollywood director, Robert Altman, and a title that would make anyone curious. The play is set in a Woolworth five and dime in McCarthy, Texas. The James Dean fan club is having a reunion. A group of women are getting together for the first time in the 20 years since James Dean died. It's their confrontation, after all this time, that sparks the drama. But maybe the greatest drama of the evening is Cher in her Broadway debut. I don't care just what people say. This is the Cher we're used to as she starred for five seasons on television. With this play, Cher is launching a new career as a dramatic actress. Last month, in a rehearsal hall, she was learning lines and a Texas accent. What's that saying you're always rattling off? One either God works seriously. And developing a role of a small-town bar girl. Don't go blaming God for all of this. Well, somebody's got to take the blame. Well, what no, impressed me no, about this early run-through and a mock-up of the Broadway set was Cher's ease and confidence. Not only does she enjoy acting, but she is serious about it, too. Why this play? I think it's a good play, and it's, the only, it's like the old lady that got married. I mean, it's the only person that asked. Do you think you have what it takes to be a stage actress, that spark that the theater needs? I don't know it, but I think I have it. Yeah. You can't know any of that stuff. You don't know anything until you get out there and do it. That's the unfortunate part. Are you worried or even fearful about New York critics and their reaction? I don't know what they're going to do. I hope that I'm going to be good, and so they, they won't be able to say anything really terrible maybe some constructive criticism, but I hope that they're not going to be able to just cut me up into, you know, hamburger helper or something like that. What about the money on Broadway? It takes me a week on Broadway to make what I make and a half an hour in Las Vegas. Actually, not even half an hour, about 11 minutes. She's getting $4,000 a week. Can you put that into some perspective? What do some other stars get on Broadway? There are other stars uh, who are in revival that are getting fifty and sixty thousand dollars a week and have made themselves millionaires playing the revival for a long time so this is a very very modest salary I mean for a performer who's been doing it as long as I have it's not very much money but I didn't come here for the money I want to do this it's important to me to do this why because it's what I started out to be, only... Longest of the three stars in this play, both on Broadway and in Hollywood. She won her greatest acclaim 15 years ago in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and danced off with an Oscar. Stop that! In life was an appearance in a crowd scene in Giant. I don't mean to sound boastful, but I, I was in that film. Mostly in the crowd scenes, but then my face does appear very distinctly in one segment. Her role as Mona marks her 20th year as a Broadway leading lady. We asked her, what makes somebody a star? Sometimes it's a brilliant actor. Sometimes it's someone who can't do anything, but I'm so taken aback by what they can do that it amazes me. 
I'm a good character actor. Now, that's all I really am. Cher so? Yes, I think she is. I love that whole kind of wonderful campy thing that she has, that she does, that is so special and extraordinary. And I love that. I mean, I love to watch her. As Joanne, Karen Black projects a different quality than the other two stars, as usual, sensuous and seductive. She burst on the screen in 1970 in five easy pieces. Or I'll do anything that you like me to do. If you would tell me that you love me. The role? A smoldering sex kitten. Almost overnight, she became one of the biggest names in the business. Robert Altman chose her for the part of a country singer in his film, Nashville. Which, you know, I just thought, this, I've got to try this. I just, it's such a challenge. Tell me about Joanne. She's a transsexual. This character is a, a bitter and sad inside. Lots of people have said that it's unusual. <clears throat> I've heard it all my life, so it sounds perfectly normal to me. She's above all honest. Are you the mother of uh, his son? How on earth did you know that? I saw one of your signs down the highway. See the son of James Dean visit Woolworth's Five and Dime. The director of the play, Robert Altman, created one of Hollywood's classic comedies, M.A.S.H. Suicide Those people in the same play, I gotta go see it. And I look for that kind of thing. I look for surprise. Uh, and I think that the, the actors usually deliver that surprise. So uh, once, I feel actually that about 90% of my creative input is finished when I've cast it. Because then it's really up to those people to do it. And in a few moments, we'll know if they did it. When Tom Hoving reports from the opening night party with the reviews. empty sitcom. It takes place in a small Texas town in 1975, 20 years to the night that James Dean died in a car crash. At the Five and Dime, where they used to hang out, members of a Jimmy Dean fan club hold a reunion, and the girls tell each other the same lies they told each other 20 years ago. Sandy Dennis vows again that James Dean was the father of her illegitimate child. And Cher, again, brags that she has the largest chest in West Texas. Well, you know instantly that these claims are phony, but it takes two hours for truth to out, and the predictable revelations are so slight, they are meaningless. So, until then, we get hot air. Small talk that is supposed to be funny, but playwright Ed Grasick gives us mostly blah instead of belly laughs. Given the hollow characters they must portray, most of the cast fares okay, and Cher steals the play. She is bright and zesty, with solid assurance and a winning presence. They look like they've shrunk any to you. I don't know. No, they don't look. They, just, they both look the same to me. <laughs> Mo, do you, do you think that they could be as big as, um, as Marilyn Monroe's? So I think they might be bigger. Do you think <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Dennis, unfortunately, once again plays Sandy Dennis with an avalanche of stutters, squints, and gasps. Karen Black does well by the most underwritten of the three star parts. Director Robert Altman keeps everybody moving and nicely manages intermittent flashbacks, and the set by David Grotman is superb, complete with a Jimmy Dean shrine wall and a picture of the Last Supper framed in a blue neon light. But this is a sad expenditure of talent, time, and money on such a thunderously slight property. Come back to the five and dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, doesn't play, doesn't play. Like this, the play should have a future as well. You? Thank you, Tom.